It's time for the sandbox news. This week we have new clothes, debug tools, and editor updates. Also, work has been started on new advanced systems for sound. It's very exciting. We have a new haircut. This is called the bun. Now, as you might imagine, it's in the shape of a bun. There's also new shoes. These are the sneakers. Construct has received some very minor updates. Can you spot them? I bet you can't. There's new signs. So this is a do not enter sign. And here we have give way signs. There are some other minor details like signs on the wall here. And these barriers have been moved upwards. We can see there's some detail on the ceiling too. There's a do not enter sign, so you're not supposed to go this direction. I wonder if we can still break the lights. There are some new props over here, including these little sandbags and this plastic barrier. There's also a pile of dirt. Wow, a pile of dirt, that's so cool. New systems for sounds are being worked on. Currently, we only have the most basic sound options. We can play menu sounds that come from everywhere and very basic three-dimensional world sounds. There's not a lot of settings and parameters for these. We can really only do the most basic play the sound and does the sound loop. But with the new sound updates, we'll be able to do a lot more. Now, I don't know the full extent of how sounds are going to work, but we can see there's a new sound stack editor that's being worked on. This is a node graph editor where you can configure your sounds as much as you like. Now, I don't know the exact details of how this works and what we can do with it, but I do know that it'll be a lot more than what we currently have. Also, if you've played Sandbox, you might have noticed that all the maps are completely silent. That's because there are no soundscape entities either. Soundscapes are the ambient sound of an environment, and without it, the world is just silent. A couple maps have soundscapes. For example, my metro map has sounds. However, it's really hacked together. It's just one looping sound with a couple other sounds randomly playing. But actually, they're not playing randomly because we don't have the ability to have random things in maps yet. There's also a new debug light probe command. So if I type r underscore light probe volume debug grid, I can turn this on and we can see there's a bunch of debug spheres around the map. So this shows lighting samples from the specific area. If I go into the car park here, we can see it's a lot more densely packed because this is a smaller area. So we can see all these light probes are properly lit if I break the light they become unlit, just as you would imagine. And there's different settings for the metalness and roughness. So if I was to set the metalness to 100% and the roughness to zero, it basically turns into a perfectly reflective cube map preview. So we can also check to make sure our reflections are working properly. I'm on my stockyard map now, and we can see the cube map reflection. It looks very realistic. There are some updates to Hammer Editor and the Entity Tool. So we can see now these entities are separated by the different games. I'm looking at the default core entities now. So it looks like they're organized by different types. So these are constraints. These are different effects. We have fog and sky, lighting, navigation, player triggers, and uncategorized. Looks like these entities can also have icons now too. I don't know if that was a thing previously. If I go to a different game, we can see these are all uncategorized. If I click here, this will toggle the class name. So if you're an old school Hammer user, you'll be familiar with light underscore environment and light omni. But if I use the friendly names, it says environment light and orthographic light. Oh, interesting. These get sorted differently depending on if you have friendly names or the class names enabled. I guess that makes sense. It's organized in alphabetical order. If I mouse over it, we can see there's a big detailed description too. And I can click here to open the add games menu. Looks like there's also a recent tab. So that's very useful. I, I like this a lot more than the old system, which was just a big list of all the entities. It's very nice that these are organized now. There's also new tiling support for the fast texture tool. So if we look at the surface here, we can see the material isn't lined up properly. It looks glitched. But with the new updates to the fast texture tool, I can fix that. So if I go to fast texture tool, there is new tiling options. So I can either tile the U or the V. Now, 
I think I need to tile the U here. No, I need to tile V. How does this work? Um, yeah, I don't think this works. The, I had to type in a repeat amount manually. Um, I don't think this works properly yet. So I'll have to submit a bug report. If I was to take maintain aspect ratio, I would expect the surface to look like this. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but it, it doesn't work yet. There are a couple other minor tools updates. For example, the AnimGraph editor now supports groups. I assume this works with the Control G and Control U hotkeys. However, I haven't tried this yet. This is a preview from the developers. In the material editor, oh wait, maybe this hasn't, um, maybe this doesn't work. Oh, uh, maybe this would only take effect on a fresh install, but the VR part of the shader name should be removed now. And it should just say simple shader. There, I, I changed it manually. But I imagine with a fresh install, it should be like that by default. This was a kind of annoying issue because I would always manually change my default shader to be simple, but it would just get reset occasionally. It was so weird. I'm glad that's been fixed now. Well, that's it. That's all the sandbox news. Like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you to my Patreon supporters.